Hi, I'm Alan Whiting from Outback Travel Australia. We knew the Chinese invasion of the automotive industry would gain pace, and this Haval H9 is a quality vehicle that's going to challenge traditional wagon market leaders. There's the same sort of stigma with Chinese products as there used to be with Japanese and Korean. But if you forget the badging, the Haval is very well made. The interior fit and finish is similar to the best from Japan, Korea and Europe. It's very quiet. The handling is European style. It's firm but uh, reasonably compliant. Braking is powerful and progressive. It's a nice vehicle on road. The steering is light but with good road feel. At launch there was only one engine option in the Haval wagon range, a two litre turbocharged petrol engine. It's got plenty of grunt but unfortunately it needs to rev to do its job and it is very thirsty. We couldn't get better than 14.8 litres per 100k and that was driving it lightly loaded and with a gentle foot. There is a diesel in the Great Wall family and the sooner they drop that into the H9 the better. The front seats are multi-adjustable. This is the Lux model so they're both powered. The seats are also faced with punched leather and the ventilation system blows through the seat so you can have cool or warm air blowing through the seat. There's also a massage function on the two front seats. So on long trips, you get a bit of stiff back, press the massage button. It's a great idea. Vision is very good. The left side mirror dips when you engage reverse. The reverse camera has grid lines for reverse parking and right angle parking. When the moving block becomes green, keep the steering wheel, then drive the vehicle backward. Aval is an unfamiliar name, but it's part of the Great Wall group. Great Wall didn't have brilliant success with its ute efforts in Australia. It's to be hoped that the Haval brand does much better. It's at the other end of the quality scale and the pricing seems high at first. The H9 versions are priced between $46,000 and $51,000 but the level of equipment and the quality puts them against vehicles that are $70,000 and more. The Haval doesn't mind dirt roads, corrugations and mild potholes don't worry it, but better quality dampers would improve the handling on dirt. Dirt road performance gets a tick. Let's see how it handles our off-road circuit. The Haval H9 has a proper ladder frame chassis, box section, it's got a towing friendly live rear axle with a five link and double wishbones up front. It seems very ruggedly made. There's a steel protection plate over the engine sump and the transmissions and a cover over the 80 litre fuel tank. The navigation system works well and has good fire trail mapping.
On our fire trail section, the Haval suspension showed just how compliant it is. It very rarely picked up a wheel and didn't bump steer. It felt great on trail driving. We've been driving in auto mode on dirt and on fire trails. In this mode, the Borg Warner transfer case apportions torque front and rear, but for our rocky climb, we'll engage low range. Engaging low range also locks the rear differential. The Haval just walked up our rocky test slope. The suspension is very compliant. Low range gearing lets it just creep along with hardly any revs. Very, very impressive vehicle. However, the hill descent control isn't slow enough for this particular piece of terrain, but works fine on fire trails with gentler slopes. The Haval H9 Lux front seats are as good as it gets. And there's also plenty of room in the second row. Best for two adults. And there's a nice armrest in between the seats. There are ventilation controls in the second row seat. And the second row seats also have seat warmers. There's an air purifier, obviously handy in Beijing traffic jams. Third row seat entry is quite easy. There's a step. But the perches in here are best for kids. The back door is a swing away type, that's fine, it's easy to get to the cargo area and kids like to scramble in over the back of the seats and this type of door makes it easier for that. There's a locking function on the door strap so it won't slam on you if you're on a slope. There are tool holders in the door and emergency triangles. There's another tool space under the floor and a hydraulic jack. There's a 220 volt socket, but it's only 150 watts, so you won't run a fridge off it. The tie downs are serious, but the best trick in the back is power folding third row seats. How good's that? The engine bay is huge, so there won't be a problem fitting a diesel engine in here. You could put a big bore petrol V8 in this space. The air cleaner is very easy to check. The H9 Lux model comes with 18 inch wheels 
but the premium has 17s for which there's a better selection of bush tyres. The side steps look classy and have got non-slip pimples on them. The Haval's headlights are better than most and it has cornering lights as well. All the doors have got double rubber seals. No dust should get into the H9. The Haval H9 is a very impressive wagon. Put a diesel in at Haval Motors and I'll have one. <laughs>